What's up, marker heads? It's Karen from Art by Karen E. Haley, and today I am introducing my personal children's book project. This is an early reader children's book about a rabbit named Taffy, and I'm really excited to share it with you. This series is going to do two things. It will document my progress on this book from start to finish, and it will also have advice in each episode geared towards anyone who is working on their own personal project just like this. I hope that it's really helpful for you, and in this episode, I'm going to be talking about choosing the ideal project for you. So there are five key ingredients when going into a project that you want to think about. Uh, there may be more for other people. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. That'd be really helpful. Um, but the first thing I wrote down was know what inspires you to draw versus what doesn't inspire you to draw. The next thing I'm going to talk about is knowing what kind of story you want to tell and having a finished story. And then right amount of time to finish is really important and right amount of materials to finish is really important and as well as appealing to your audience, knowing who your audience is and knowing what kind of audience you want to build based on your book. So this is a kind of the breakdown of what I'm going to talk about. So first I'm going to get into knowing what inspires you to draw and what doesn't inspire you to draw. When you're building a personal project, it can be very, very helpful to gear it towards your personal preferences. Uh, this seems like a no-brainer, but if you're working on a project that you don't like the subject of, you're not going to want to work on it. So the best thing to do when you're working on a project that you're going to be committing a long period of time to from three months to maybe even a couple years, you're going to want to make it about your favorite things to draw. For me, I decided to make this book about animals. <laughs> the rabbit is a very fun little animal to draw. I really enjoy drawing taffy. And I wanted the scenery to be about where I grew up. I grew up on a farm and I had a lot of forest and trees and things like that. So I grew up in this environment and I really enjoy drawing it. So it's something that I am comfortable drawing and I know I'll be able to finish a project that is about this stuff. Next, you want to sit down and figure out what kind of story you want to tell. There are two things you can do to ensure that you have a good direction with your project. Uh, first, you should sit down and make a mission statement. Uh, for mine, I have written my mission statement down here and I wrote that I want a cute book with simple illustrations and simple sentences. I want the character to be relatable to new readers and I want the sentences to be easy for new readers to understand. So I have a plan, a clear direction for my storybook and it's made it so much easier to sit down and work on it. Uh, the next thing that's really helpful is having your manuscript ready. Uh, for me, since my book's pretty simple, I have all of my text completely done and ready to go. For each illustration it has a sentence, so I know exactly what each picture has to have in it, uh, and this really, really helps. Um, if you're working on something that's really long, maybe like a comic or something like that, having at least your beginning, middle, and end is so helpful. <laughs> if you know where your direction's going, you're going to have so much more of an easy time and I really recommend you guys sit down and figure this stuff out as you get ready to work on your project. Know what inspires you to draw and what kind of story you want to tell. It should be time for you to figure out your time frame. How much time are you going to need to complete your project? There are a few things you're going to need to budget around. Um, you have responsibilities, I'm sure, work habits, uh, detail level and page count, these are all things that affect how long it's going to take you to complete your project. For me, I have my family is my responsibility. I'm a stay-at-home mom, so they need to have some of my time, so I need to make sure that I'm giving them the time they need. Uh, I have a pretty bad work habit. I'm a procrastinator, so giving myself a large amount of time is not wise. I'm giving myself about four months to complete the project because I do spend so much time with my family. Um, I am going to be putting a medium amount of detail level into my project, so I know I should be able to do two illustrations per week. 
and I am going to be doing 24 pages. So these are all things that are going to affect how long it's going to take me to do the project, and four months should give me a little bit of wiggle room because I will be having vacations and just doing family functions and things like that. So there are other things that I need to take into consideration. And I hope that you guys think about this as well when you are planning your project because it's so easy to think, okay, so this is how much um, work I have to do and then just budget it all in too little time or way too much time and then either you run out of momentum because you are <laughs> just scrabbling to do it or you run out of momentum because you've given yourself so much time that the inspiration is no longer fresh and you're no longer excited about your project. So these are some things that I hope you consider. And next I want to talk about the uh, amount of materials you need when you are working on your project. You're going to need to make sure you have as much uh, uh, as you're going to need and then some. You want to budget for mistakes. You might mess up and have to redo an illustration or two. So having a little bit of extra paper, a little more materials than you might need, that's something that's really important. If you run out of supplies, it can really break your momentum. And especially if you're low on your budget, then you might not have the money to get the supplies right away and then it puts your whole project on hold. So it's a really bad thing to do is run out of your supplies. So that's another thing you need to consider. Finally, I want to talk about appealing to your audience. So for me, I want to appeal to my YouTube audience. That's why I'm doing this YouTube uh, series and that's why I'm going for um, making sure you guys uh, know who this character is. And I also want to appeal to the actual books audience too. That's why I'm making the character uh, relatable to the kids who are going to be reading the book. So when you are working on your own project, make sure that your story appeals to the audience you want to target. Maybe you don't have an online following, but you want to build one. So making your book about what you love will attract an audience that also loves what you love. And that's something that can be a really great way to build a community. And it's so much fun to have people around you that enjoy the same things you do. Anyway, so that's about it for this video. I really hope that it's helpful. I'm starting to get shaky because I'm getting hungry. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it off here. And I hope that you guys uh, look forward to the next video. And I will see you guys then.